As we approach the final episode of Amphibia, it's time, I believe, to think about what the hardest thing the title of that episode will mean for Anne, Sasha, and Marcy. It is one of the more fascinating and symbolically weighty titles in the show. You have titles like The Beginning of the End or All In, which are pretty obvious as to what they're signifying. The beginning of the end is, of course, right before the battle. All in is, of course, the battle, but what comes after as we draw to a final conclusion? I believe that this is going to be a reference to something one of the trio, probably Anne, says in this episode about what the hardest thing is. And based on what the show has presented to us thus far, this hardest thing is probably going to have a lot to do with forgiveness, rebuilding the friendship between them, and moving forward with their lives, trying to ensure the strength and stability of the friendship going forward without constraining each of them individually, or without neglecting their needs as happened in the past. Think about what Anne said to Sasha about forgiveness being hard but necessary. This is right at the heart of the show's ideals about the bonds between these three. There was a time when I somewhat anxiously wondered if the bond between these three would last, but it looks very much like it will. The show has repeatedly enforced, especially in its closing stretch, that the bond between these three, while broken and warped by their differences of opinion, miscommunication, and a lot of misconceived perspectives on all sides, is still valuable to the three of them. It's still worth saving. It's worth rebuilding. It's worth trying to reconstruct for the betterment of all parties involved. The friendship has helped nurture them. It's helped them prosper and develop as individual human beings with their own agency and perspectives. It's given them comfort and support. And yet the bond between the three of them has also caused them to cause each other a good amount of harm, and unintentional suffering. Their bond has withered because there has not been a willingness to renegotiate it, to communicate and see what the three of them need going forward. They are not little kids anymore. They have gone into another world and had a lot of experiences, and even before then, that old compact between the three of them was breaking down as they were growing up and growing into different people. They couldn't rely on the simple platitudes of childhood friendship anymore. Sasha's willingness to do whatever she believed was right for her friends regardless of what they wanted for themselves, caused their needs to be neglected. Marcy's inability to assert herself in their friendship out of fear that she was growing apart from the three of them and out of fear that they wouldn't want to be as close to her if she wasn't willing to do what they wanted. All of this helped strain the friendship. Sasha should have been aware of this. Marcy was aware to a certain extent. Anne, happy-go-lucky as ever, really wasn't. She did not see the dark underbelly of that friendship, all the rust that had developed. But that does not mean the bond isn't worth saving. The three of them can commit themselves to that bond and try and rebuild it for the betterment of all. And that is what the show is encouraging. Now, this is the part where I would typically say something like, Oh, that's a good lesson for the kids, but honestly, it's a good lesson for everyone. 
I've seen too many teens and even adults in our day and age easily want to cut off bonds that deeply matter and are deeply significant just because there are serious systematic flaws in those bonds and then people wonder why they're so alone all the time. Now I'm not saying you have to go along with commitments you made to other people in the past, whether they be platonic, romantic, whatever. If the bond really isn't working, bonds are constantly changing and constantly readjusting based on changing circumstances and we should be willing to think of them as active and organic. They live and they can die. It happens. If a bond isn't working for you, you should be able and willing to depart from it. But it's a hard decision to make and it should not be made lightly. Now, I don't want to say that this is just a problem with kids these days. I don't want to say that it's just a problem with our generation. But I do think that as we continue to be plunged into hyper-atomized, hyper-individualist consumerism, that this problem becomes increasingly something to worry about. It becomes increasingly fatal to the capacity for us to form organic bonds that last with each other. We can't just keep treating each other as simple commodities, as just a wellspring of pleasures that delight us until they don't anymore and then should get dropped. These close bonds are a lot more than just dopamine delivery systems. They have real long-term value and we should treat them as such instead of always yearning for short-term delight. We should reckon with each other and ourselves honestly. We should not take everything other people say and do in the worst possible light, especially when they're dear to us. It's very easy to become so defensive and valorize one's own pleasure and enjoyment at the detriment of others, but that doesn't lead to anyone's happiness long term. There are many ways that bonds can break, and sometimes they go away even when they're not broken. Sometimes people just grow apart. It happens. Sometimes it becomes harder to spend time with someone for practical reasons. It happens. Sometimes people just have a genuine difference of opinion on how they want to move forward with their lives, and so people are no longer as close as they once were. That happens. But if a bond is that important to you, if it matters, if it's significant to your sense of self and to your general experience of the world, if it's something that you deeply treasure, then yes, it's worth fighting for. It's worth doing the hard work to negotiate whether this bond can be made better. Making something better is much harder than either abandoning it or taking it as is. But it is the difficult work that needs to be done. Perhaps it is indeed the hardest thing. Now, I was not planning to go into this longish lecture on sociology, philosophy, and just general human morality. <laughs> but let's bring it back to Amphibia. Anne intuitively understands a lot of what I've been saying. She might not be a charismatic, brilliant leader like Sasha, and she might not be a strategic genius like Marcy, but she understands people. She understands the people she's close to. She deeply treasures bonds with others, and she's willing to try and cultivate those bonds for the betterment of herself and the person she's linked to. Though she can be impulsive and she can make rash decisions that she comes to regret, her depth of commitment to her friends and the bonds that link them together cannot be underestimated. 
She is not an especially forgiving person like Aang or Steven from Steven Universe. She's not sanctimonious, ever. She's not even a good person all the time. She's very flawed, and her perspective on those around her, the general world, or even herself, can be quite solipsistic at times. She doesn't adore the idea of trying to repair her bond with Sasha because she doesn't see Sasha's faults, or because she's an unusually forgiving person, like the other protagonists I just mentioned, but because she sees the value in this bond. She sees how the care between the two of them is genuine, how it's not based on mere pleasures that they share, or on just practical matters. It's based on real caring for each other for the sake of each other, and thus ennobling each other, making each other better. They see what that relationship can be at its best. Anne admires Sasha. She sees Sasha's noble qualities, and she wants to help free Sasha from a lot of the worst tendencies that she's been carrying around and become a better friend. And she wants to be a better friend to Sasha and to Marcy as well. They're willing to fix these bonds. They're willing to work to repair them in order for all three of them to thrive. She's willing to forgive Sasha and she's willing to forgive Marcy. Sasha, despite her, I'd argue, reasonable hesitation to forgive Marcy, is willing to forgive her as well because she knows that the bond between them is valuable, that Darcy is wrong, that they were friends, and that though their bond might change as they grow up, they can and should still be friends. Perhaps that bond between the three of them isn't as strong as it once was. And they certainly will never have that same pure, idyllic connection they had when they were children. But they can reevaluate their bond. They can see how important it is to the three of them, and they can work to improve it. Not just for the sake of some abstract moral ideal, but for the good of themselves and each other. And they will. The show emphasizes how important that is. And it makes a very strong case for the importance of working hard to revive these flawed but nonetheless important friendships. This will be my last Amphibia video before the show ends forever. That is wild to think about. I can't believe that it's only been three years since the show started airing. It feels like it's been much longer than that. Then again, a lot has happened in my life and in the world throughout those last few years, so perhaps you can forgive me for feeling like that. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this before anyone else. Take care, y'all. Tune in soon for the next analysis. It will be coming soon. Adios, comrades.